What's up, folks? Welcome back to LettermanRow.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. That is Spencer Holbrook. This is a brief uh, talking stuff presented by Buyers Auto. We're just talking stuff about something that's pretty big, I guess, if you're a Buckeyes fan. Uh, JT Tuomalo, out of the country's number three ranked overall player in the class of 2021, number one ranked overall prospect, according to 247sports.com, uh, made made a, an announcement uh, this afternoon via Brandon Huffman from 247, who is sort of his his media representative and Spencer, he's not visiting Alabama. And that seems important. It seems huge because not only is he not visiting Alabama, when I first saw the, the, the original tweet, it's okay. He's not visiting Alabama because he's already been there. And so he, he's just tired. He doesn't need to, you read that story uh, from Brandon Huffman. Again, we don't normally give a lot of credit elsewhere because we do our own reporting, but go read that. If you haven't, he's not even considering Alabama anymore. It, it, Alabama is out. And so I think that's more telling than, than the no visit, because like I said, originally I thought with no visit, it was more so just a fact of he's already been there and he doesn't want to be on the road anymore. Nope. He's completely pro- took them out of the top five. It's now a top four and, and Ohio state's chances of landing this uh, coveted defensive end has, I, I believe has gotten better now. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, when we talked about these visits for JTT back uh, at the end of May, when, when the visits finally got scheduled, I know that we talked about the placement of where Ohio State was in that mix as the third official visit, but what we said then was that they were really the first official visit of what was going to be the pivotal week of Ohio State, then Oregon, then Alabama. And I know we both talked about it then, but you know, we said it's it's that's a lot of travel. That is a lot of of fatigue that gets put on a body and a family. And I don't know if it was the fact that he had felt like that was just too much or that Bama, the the vibe there wasn't what he wanted. Maybe it was, you know, not quite as family friendly or as him and his family would like Ohio state, Oregon, Washington, USC, these, these places have all made it very clear to him that they're trying to have this family atmosphere, Uh, Alabama. And this is not a knock on Nick Saban's program in any way. You can't knock them in really any capacity. They win a national championship every other year. Um, but it's not a place that is about a family vibe at all. Like it is business. It is business all day, every day at Alabama. And I do wonder if seeing these other schools before that helped JT Tuomaloa and his family realize that there was a part missing at Alabama that he, he knew that he needed. Um, now, what does that mean for Ohio State and Oregon, who I think are the two front runners here? I mean, it certainly means they did a darn good job. Uh, I know people would have liked to have seen him cancel these other visits after the Ohio State visit, but he literally left Ohio State on Sunday and got on a plane and went straight to Oregon. So it's not like there was a lot of time to cancel those things. But the the day visit, uh, you know, the Oregon visit was Monday to Wednesday. So we did have at least a little bit of time to go home and compress uh, before or decompress before um, figuring out if he wanted to go to Tuscaloosa on Friday. So I think that that, that little bit of time in between those visits helped probably open up the door for this cancellation. Um, yeah, I, I think so as well. I think that that time spent is is was really valuable for him. And I think he, you know, he had said, I believe he said in the story that that he had been thinking about it for a while, and that it's just. But here's the quote. It's just a feeling I've had for a while now, and after getting back from my official visit to Oregon, we decided not to take the trip to Alabama. And I think. If, if that thought was creeping into his head and he's already done all this travel and he's seen the schools that he believes he needs to see, there's no reason to, A, waste his own time and B, waste Alabama's time if he's been having those thoughts for weeks anyways. And so I think it's, it's actually a, a point of maturity on his part to, to kind of sit back and say, I, I think this isn't the right place for me. I'm not going to waste anybody's time doing this. And so now it's, it's a four-team four race. I think that there are two ways people are going to view that comment, right? Where he says, I've kind of been thinking about this for a while. I kind of, and I think people can read it as saying he's known what he wanted to do uh, when it came down to a school that he already visited and that was the favorite. And so he knew he, he got what he wanted, but I, it could also be that he just had all for a while been feeling that Alabama wasn't the right fit. So it does, may have nothing to do with the other four schools but more so with Alabama. So I think it just really depends on how you want to look at it. Is this a situation where he had been feeling a certain way about one school and he had that affirmed and then he made the decision based on what he's seen, or was it he'd been feeling that way about Alabama and realized by being at those other schools that he was correct in that initial 
vibe and decided to not visit Alabama. So I, I don't know that necessarily it's easy to decipher this. And nothing with JT Tuomaloa in the last 16 months has been easy. Um, so you have to sort of read as many uh, of these leaves as possible and say, okay, well, what does this mean exactly? It's been Ohio State at the top of the list. Like that's one thing he has not tried to shy away from in the last 16 months. I mean, if you look at the the reporting from Brandon Huffman in the last 16 months, it has consistently been that Ohio State was the team to beat. Now, the people, of course, are going to see, well, he canceled the Alabama visit after visiting Oregon. So maybe it's because he liked Oregon that much. But I don't know if that's the case. I mean, Oregon, I think, has been a much bigger threat here than people have wanted to believe for a while. We've talked about that before. Um, I don't think that there's really an opportunity here for Washington or USC to swoop in and steal. Uh, I do think that there's an opportunity for Oregon here to, to make that play. And this is where, Spencer, if you're really talking about scheme and fit, this is where what we talked about last week with JT2 and Maloa matters. Oregon runs a 3-4 defense similar to what Alabama ran or runs, right? And that's something that is not ideal for what JTT's skill set is or what he wants to do. He wants to be a four, a part of a 4-3 set where he's on the edge. And Ohio State is a place that is recruiting him in that manner. So does that make the biggest difference here, do you think, moving forward? I think so. I think Larry Johnson's had the upper hand here for a while. I think Larry Johnson is the X factor here. And I think Larry Johnson's ability to show him, if your body allows you to add weight here, you can do this at this spot. If you decide, if your body takes you this way, because that's what Ohio State does on the defensive line, wherever your body takes you, that's where they're going to use you. And I think he has the ability to play anywhere on the defensive line. And I think Ohio State will use that to their advantage and say, okay, we've had this guy drafted from this spot. We've had these guys drafted from these spots. No matter where you're at on the defensive line, Larry Johnson's going to use you in a way that's best for you. Ultimately, I think that's at defensive end. But if he happens to be a three-tech, there's no better place to play three technique than at Ohio State. And so I think that's the determining factor here is the ways Larry Johnson uses his defensive linemen. And he can just use that as more fuel to that fire, that recruiting fire, and say, this is the plan for you. If this happens, this is the plan for you. If this happens, and it goes from there. Yeah, and if you look at what Larry Johnson can put on tape and show JT to him below out and his family is – Chase Young played three-tech at Ohio State. Nick Bosa played three-tech. Joey Bosa lined up on the inside. All these guys are defensive ends in the NFL, and they learned how to be elite edge rushers, but they also had the ability to be flexible and move around. And I do think that that's a piece of this puzzle that maybe doesn't get talked about a lot, and maybe that's because Tuimaloa doesn't really talk about what he's looking for outside of family and fit and getting to the NFL. Um, but, you know, this is where Ohio State, I think, uh, uh, my – my prediction here is that he ends up at Ohio State, period. I think that's bottom line. I think that's what people are watching for. I think that the Buckeyes will win this battle. I do think that Oregon is a much bigger and much more realistic threat than they are being given credit for and more than they've been given credit for. Um, but I think ultimately this comes down to Ohio State and Oregon for JT to a Malo out. And I think that the Buckeyes are going to win that battle. We don't know when it's going to happen. I do think that this moves up the timeline a little bit. On our last podcast, I said my my thought was around July 4th. I guess right now I'm thinking probably sometime middle of next week, but that's based on just the way I see this playing out. And from talking to a couple people um, that have said he's not going to just sit down and make a decision likely this weekend. So I think give it a couple of days and we'll see what happens. But either way, it's good news for Ohio State because it's not going to be Alabama for JT to a blowout. It's going to be Ohio State, Oregon, USC, or Washington. Buckeyes are the front runner, Spencer. I guess we're we're coming to the finish line. Absolutely. It's it's an exciting time. That is the finish line of this little addendum to talking stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast brought to you by Letterman Row and Byers Automotive. Thanks for watching.